How do there guys, welcome back to Edgar TV, it's the same situation as the UK, business day, one player will be getting a PDC tour card, that's the player who wins the group, or, the, or wins the tournament, the rest will get points in regards to their positions, which will put them onto an order of merit, where 13 places will be available via the order of merit, not the 10 that are in the UK, so a little bit more opportunity over in Europe, due to the fact they had higher attendance numbers, and it does on a pro rata basis. So, let's take a look through the 1 to 8, which we expect to be a, a higher standard, Today, as we hit the business end, we get those bigger hitters in, the players who join us from the Challenge Tour and players that have lost their card. Andy Bartons, the WDF World Champion, kicks things off with a victory against her fellow countryman, Born Van Putt. Um, I'm going to apologise if you haven't seen before. I'm pretty sure some of you come here just for the pronunciation, so I apologise in advance if I do butcher anybody's name. Darius Labanowskis wins 6-1 against Jimi Hendrix. Come on, Darius! I want Darius to get through because I don't want him to come on that WDF tour or get in my way anywhere. I'm fed up of seeing Darius Labanowskis. The man's cost me a fortune. Obviously only joking if you're unfamiliar with jokes as I've noticed a few people are these days. Benjamin Pratnamar is the one we followed throughout the first stage. Very passionate dart player from Slovenia. He goes out in the first round 6-5. Christian Kist was very, very good on the Pro Tour last year. Got himself into the World Championships and Players' Championships. Just played by a bit of an injury. Also played by a bit of a problem called Luke Littler, who blew him away at the World Championship, as he did most people. Max Hopp, probably, or arguably, should I say, the biggest name in this field. But he's gone out first round again. He's in big trouble once again here of just falling by the wayside. Lucas Venick didn't produce in the first stage, but he's here, and he's starting to produce an average of nearly 90. That's what we expect of Lucas Venick. Jules Van Dongen was probably one of the most unfortunate people to lose a card last year, having a great second year, but a poor first year. And that was the same for Radak Skagansky, who has got his campaign up and running. Jella Klassen, top of the, or up towards the top end, should I say, of the WDF Order of Merit. He gets through as well against Jerome Miok, someone who's had some good success at the Super Series. Round two, and it's not just time to pick out those key performers now, it's also time to pick out some big defeats. We've lost three of our likely runners. Ben Robb of New Zealand, a lot of people's fancy in order to get a tour card. He goes out to Radek Skagansky, someone who would have been in the World Match Play, the World Grand Prix, provisional places, had he won one more game at the World Championship. But he's got that victory against Ben Robb. Andy Barton's the WDF World Champion, goes out averaging just 79. He lost out to Joby Tabak. But the real big stories are those averages. Two players breaking the 100 average. You had a couple of people in the 90s. Mario van der Bohard, a former PDC tour card holder, looking to bounce straight back and get it. Thibaut Tricol was very close to that big average as well of the 95 plus. We also had Liam Mandel Lawrence. But once again, Raihuta Arahara, as from Japan, has hit another average over 100, 104. This is a guy maybe we need to start keeping an eye on. He looks like a serious player. And this is one of the things I like about Q School so much. The unknown player, the player you don't get to see all the time. Player bursting through. I mean, everyone starts at Q School. Remember Gerwin Price? No one knew who Gerwin Price was not that many years ago when he went to Q School. And it's great to see sort of those stories developing. Remember Josh Rock? Just two years ago, he went in as a 10 to 1 outsider to get a tour card. Now look at him. You get him that for him to win the World Championships these days. But last 32 stage, and it was not following up in terms of that performance for Benjamin Deruti or for Raihuta Arahara. Sometimes it's very, very hard. When you have a really good performance at something like Q School, when you're practiced and prepared and built up for it, it's hard to go out there and repeat that performance sometimes. The WF World Championship runner-up, Chris Landman, still in there, despite the fact... The winner is gone in Andy Barton's. Come on, Darius! He's into the last 16. Hopefully he gets through so I don't have to run into him anytime soon. Jules Van Dongen. A lot of people's pick to get through this. 6-2 victory over Greeks' John Michael. And it's points time for these guys. So getting through to the last 16, they will be guaranteed two points. They are playing for an extra point now in the quarterfinals where there are three points up for grabs for those quarterfinal places. But it's not about the points. 
Today, it's about the card. The big story, though, of the last 16 is no one averaged over 95, but it's not averages at this point. This point comes down to the story and to the bottle. And we did lose three people that have lost tour cards that are trying to defend them here. Radak Skagansky, the player who was very close to keeping hold of his card, getting that match playing Grand Prix place, he is out. Rusty Jake Rodriguez, he is out. And everybody's fancy here, Jules Van Dongen, also going out at this stage. Now, they don't leave empty-handed. It's a couple of points on the board. It's a good start to their Q-School campaign. And essentially, it just lowers the bar a little bit. But these are three players that would definitely be eyeing up the daily price. Now, you may notice change of attire. I'm playing tonight from... 10 p.m. Moda Super Series YouTube channel, or if you are in the UK, you can get it on Sky Channel 427. Uh, I've said it many times. I'm not fully ready for this, but I'm looking forward to it. The fire's burning in the belly. I'm really looking forward to playing some darts for sure. But one thing we notice really when we look into this sort of last 16 onwards, we talked before about the the difference in standard between the UK and the EU, and I think it was really evident here on this day because when you take a look at the last 16, the quarterfinal and the semi-final, you could see only one average here of over 90, that was Martin Dratt, who I think we kind of not picked up on it all so far during these videos, but he's actually got himself through to the final now, taking on Chris Landman. Chris Landman, who won the Moda Super Series just last week. He also was a runner-up at the WDF World Championship, so he should be full of confidence. Christian Kist, great to see him reach the semi-final. He's had a lot of health issues over his life, and they have been coming back to plague him in recent times. But a semi-final puts him in a real strong position to get a tour card. Good points if you meet in the quarter-final onwards. It does mean that consistency now is the key, rather than constant brilliance in order to get that card, especially with the extra places that are available in the EU compared to the UK. Now, going into this final, I was having a little watch of it, and I was thinking, who's going to win? I was expecting Landman to win it, but he didn't. And I was coming up with all my little Landman puns. Well, lands the man, and man lands the prize. All these little silly puns I was trying to come up with for this point. But... He couldn't get over the line, he couldn't get the job done, and he went 5-2 up in this one, which is when I thought it was job over and task done. But look, 19 darts, that's giving him 7 visits to the board. Next leg, 18 darts, that's giving him 6 visits. Well, Chris Landman's had 6 visits to hold on to his throw, so he had 18 darts there. Then he's had 18 darts again because his opponent's gone 27 visits to the board. And again in the last leg with the darts, 18 darts, 6 visits to the board, opponent's gone out. So Landman, the maker of his own doom there really, he was having 6 visits to the board every time. That's where I say is the key. If you're going over 6 visits to the board, you're leaving it in the hands of fate. And on this occasion, he wasn't able to go over the line despite 5-2 up. He's got plenty of points on the board, which is going to give him positive moving forward. If he was to win that game, it would have pulled him out of the Super Series Champions Week because being a tour card holder means he wouldn't have been able to play in that. So that would have gone to one of the best runners-up. I believe it's done on average. So everyone who runs up the best averages of those runners-up over the week that they played will then replace anyone if they get a tour card. But Martin Dracht is your first player to get a tour card from Europe. I'm going to go get ready. I've got four and a half hours to get ready now for the Super Series. And I'll catch you tomorrow for another roundup of what's going on in Q School.